five photographers and the assignment of a lifetime. A journey into the unknown to the islands around Africa. Over the islands of Africa. Cape Verde. Welcome, dear listeners. This is Radio Cabo Verde. Today's guest is the photographer Stefan. What are you doing here? I'm working on a photo book in which I want to reflect the souls of the people and the landscape. An important project for you. Yes, very. It has a lot to do with my childhood. I was born on an island and grew up in Africa, so it has emotional significance for me. And I want to examine this feeling on my journey. Good luck. And eat plenty of fish. Yes, I will. <laughs> My name is Richard Meredith Hardy and I've been flying microlights for 26 years. The microlight we're using here in Cabo Verde is a, is a FIB, which is a flying inflatable boat. It does lots of different things and none of them terribly well, but it's unique in what it does do. Good morning, uh, Pride Power, this is India 8731. At the airport on the island's capital, Praia, Richard has traveled halfway around the world like this. He's used to the reaction when he appears in his mini airplane. Since flying over Mount Everest, he's known as the most fearless ultralight pilot in the world. Good morning. How, How are, are you? you? Airport <laughs> operation. Thank you. Welcome Hello. to Hello. How do you do? Navigation okay. police. Uh, this is an amphib. So it's a flying inflatable boat. Oh, yes. and, and it's an amphibian one as well. So it has wheels. Oh, okay. What's your, the purpose of your staying here? Uh, we are coming to explore the great, the, the beautiful Cape Verde oh, okay. Islands. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Richard knows that the paperwork can take a while. The FIB does not fit into any category of civil aviation, but Richard has got his mini airplane through customs in many countries. This is his first time on Cape Verde. My job here is to uh, give Stefan an aerial perspective of Cape Verde Islands. And they are very spectacular from an aerial point of view. Hey! How are you? Richard, how are you? Very well, Fine. thank you. Pleased to meet you. Have a good <laughs> trip to Cape Verde. Thank you. Yeah. Did you have a good fly? Yeah, not bad. I just, yes. uh, just okay. arrived. Oh, it's your... Is my... Your baby? <laughs> my contraption. Okay, <laughs> nice. Aerial photos are Stefan's area of expertise. He has photographed many islands from the air. He usually goes up in a helicopter, but there are none on Cape Verde. That's why he hired Richard with his fib. Cape Verde Islands were formed over 100 million years ago. A number of them are still volcanically active. On the main island of Santiago, clouds and fog often roll over the mountains, but it seldom rains. The climate is warm and dry all year round. Vegetation is scarce and farming is difficult. Okay, 
so we are now here at Tarrafal. Okay. So where, where do you want to go? If possible, I want to go to, to Fogo after uh, San Vicente and St. Town. Okay. What do you think about this? Okay, well, <clears throat> it's perfectly possible to fly to Fogo. The problem is, is the wind is always coming this way. You are sure? Yeah, it's always the same, because it's the trade winds. The wind goes from the Sahara mm -hmm. to the Caribbean all the time. Okay, so we could fly to Fogo, but my, the machine goes very, very slowly. It's only 65 kilometers an hour. And if you have a 20 knot wind, that's 40 something kilometers an hour. So we would be coming back here at uh, 20 kilometers an hour. And that's 100 kilometers. Mm. So it would be five hours to come back. There is a very, very strong wind all the time. It could be difficult traveling around Cape Verde with a fib. The flying inflatable boat is suited to large, calm lakes. Using it here is a pioneering task. More than 500 years ago, Portuguese seafarers discovered the uninhabited islands in the Atlantic, and they made the Green Cape their biggest trans-shipping point for slaves. Today you will find many children here with green eyes and blonde hair. The Cape Verdeans are descended from West African slaves and their Portuguese owners. The country gained its independence in 1974, and it's now a democracy. As there is a shortage of jobs in the country, most Cape Verdeans live abroad. Their bank transfers home contribute to the economic growth. There's not much work in Tarafal either. On the beach, one surfer has created his own work, voluntary for now. Kobungo teaches children how to surf and swim. Hello, I'm Stéphane. I'm taking photos for a book about Cape Verde. I heard that you're teaching young people to surf. Could I take part in the course along with the pupils? Just to see how you work, and then I take photos. Would that be okay? Sure, great. And how many pupils do you have? About 40. 40? That's a lot. And how long have you been surfing? For 10 years. I won the Tara Fall Championship seven times and the National Championship of Cape Verde once. What I try to achieve through photography is an exchange, to experience people's everyday life for an hour or half an hour. This is pretty important for my philosophy. Photography broadens my horizons. It enables me to relive many small moments from my childhood, just by being a photographer. The actual image is created at the end. It's actually of secondary importance to me. To me, these moments are like little pearls. And at the end of my life, I'd like to have a whole string of pearls. Okay, maybe that sounds a bit, you know, but it's my philosophy. <laughs> the following morning, Stefan hopes he can take his first photo flight today. The sea is quiet in Tarafal Bay, but there's a light breeze as Richard is preparing the fib for takeoff. Hi, Richard. How are you? How are you? Do you think uh, we can fly today? 
Uh, well, I will try a test flight, maybe. I'm still... It's quite on the limit. I will try a solo test flight. OK. And this is the first time we've put it together. And uh, then we can make a decision if it's possible with two people. With its large sail, the fib is very unstable on the water. Before the motor is running, a small gust of wind could be enough to tip it over. And off it goes. The test flight is very shaky. It looks dangerous for the pilot and the plane. Stefan is happy when Richard lands on the water soon after. when you are up there wishing you were down there yeah and this was one of them <laughs> no faith today i don't think so not in b plus no okay it's, um, i understand you have seen the wind is very strong the wave is very strong yeah <laughs> so uh, the next time next time the takeoff went, it went that went okay but as soon as you're in the air it's very, very turbulent here. There's a terrific, there's a strong wind and very turbulent. We don't have good conditions today. The wind is getting stronger and stronger. The waves are too strong to get a good start. So anyway, the machine is uh, still intact. So we can have another go another time. But not today, I don't think. At the moment, I'm quite pessimistic. I hope this will improve. I know that the weather on the Cape Verde Islands is not really right for flying with a machine like this. But I hope we'll be in calmer areas soon. Following morning, they're ready. The wind has died down. Okay, 8731, Tom. India 8731, go ahead. Go for your altitude. Uh, we will be not above 1,000 feet. The reason why my kind of microlight is so attractive is because I'm outside in, in, in the air and, and, um, and you can look, you get a fantastic field of view. In the early morning, the wind is still mild. When the ground heats up later on, the air rises and causes turbulence, dangerous for the fib. It's a bit like being on a motorbike. You can reach totally different places than with a normal airplane. It gives you a great sense of freedom. It's a challenge to fly. Uh, it's very slow. It's a, it's, a, it's a flying brick, really. Earlier than planned, Richard prepares to land on the water. The propeller slashes a brake cable. The fib comes to a halt much too far out. With its large sail, it's unstable on the water so the two men have to get to land as quickly as possible. Luckily, a number of fishermen are there to help. Thank you. 
The brake cable somehow came into the propeller. And um, that's that. We were drifting in a strong current and had to get the rudders out quickly. And if we'd had any wind, we would have been in real big trouble. I proposed taking a rope and pulling the boat. So Stefan had to swim in with the rope and we pulled, pulled it in fast enough that we missed one of the big waves. So it was a bit of a narrow scrape. For the inhabitants of Cidadjevelia, the two adventurers and their flying dinghy are a real sensation. I'd just come out of my house and I see an airplane landing. I was delighted. I've seen parachutes landing here, but never an airplane, especially not one that can land on the water. Cidade Velha was the first capital city that the Portuguese founded on Cape Verde. Precisely one year ago, the town was named a World Heritage Site. This is being celebrated now with music from a Batuque group. Batuque was the music of the women slaves of Cape Verde. Today, its energetic rhythms are part of the pop culture of Santiago. In Praia, meanwhile, Richard goes in search of a new brake cable for the fib. Have you got one of these? No, we don't. No? No. Uh huh. This is very important. No, we don't have one of those. Hello. My name's Stefan. I'm Anna Paula. I'd like to know more about the origins of this music. This music is very important to us. It's part of our history. People like it, and we keep it alive, because it's our cultural heritage. And where is this from? What's the origin of this instrument? In the past, the slaves had nothing, not even clothing. So they used to drum on their chest. Later they got the idea of playing on cloth, which they gripped between their legs. However, now we've got these bags, and they sound even better. But these drums used to be made of cloth. I'm looking for a cable like this. Oh, oh, very good. It's plastic coated. <laughs> All my life I've been messing around with mic lights and stuff, and I live on a farm, so you have to fix stuff. And um, so I can fix stuff, which is an advantage when you're on an expedition like this. Local wisdom has it that for women, batuque is the best remedy for grief and loneliness. Batuque, they say, can relieve the pain of separation due to emigration, being left by a partner, and death. Richard will only stop worrying when the fib is running again. A test using a wall as a brake block will be the decider. That's okay. Tomorrow they plan to leave for the next island. In the hotel, Stefan assesses what he has done so far. He uses his photo printer to make initial prints during the trip.
Viewed from the outside, photography seems somewhat egotistical. You hide behind the camera, take your photo and move on. But my photography is about an exchange. Photos can be a medium for a really powerful exchange. Stefan does not just want to profit from the people that he photographs. He wants to give something back, even if it only has a symbolic value. He took photos of market saleswomen, and he gives them several prints before leaving the island. Thank you. This token of his gratitude is appreciated. Stefan has witnessed the same effect in many other countries. <laughs> What I really like about meeting strangers is this magical moment at the very beginning. At first there is shyness on both sides, then a game develops and a kind of complicity. This can lead to very interesting images. The next stop on the itinerary is the island of Sao Vicente, which was the most important in Cape Verde during colonial times. At the port of Mindelo, goods traveling between Europe and America were transshipped. The inhabitants of Mindelo love melancholic music. <laughs> Stefan has met a guitar maker whom he wants to photograph in his workshop today together with his son. The little guitar, known as a cavaquinho, was brought here by the Portuguese. Its clear sound is typical for the local music, known as morna. <laughs> Music. That's the origin, the tradition of the culture of Cape Verde. It reflects precisely our tradition and our culture. This is the longing of the Cape Verdeans who leave in order to work overseas. People write about it. The lyrics they compose and the music that they play express precisely what the people are feeling. You can say that overcoming the longing for home, that's the music of the Cape Verdeans. Saudade, longing the underlying mood of the Cape Verdeans. Those living overseas long for their home. Those still here dream of faraway places. Stefan has arranged to meet some fishermen early in the morning to go out to sea with them. How are you? Aha, a good fisherman. <laughs> Stefan has been especially looking forward to today's photo session because back home he goes fishing whenever he can. The men show him how they cut the bait here. It's a different method to the one used on the French Pacific island of New Caledonia that Stefan calls home.
Today, they're going after the yellow parrotfish and the tasty garopa with its bright orange scales. Again and again, the fishermen hit their boat with a club. We do this when we found the fish. This is what we call feeling. Lifting the mood and driving away the evil spirits. That's what we do. And you can live well from fishing? Can you earn money with it? Sure, we make some money. Him, him and him, we do pretty well. Of course it depends. It depends on whether God helps us. If God helps us, our catch is good. If not, then we just go home again, which is also okay. And the next day we come back, with more feeling. God has given them enough fish for today. Time to go home again. In São Pedro, all the public activities take place on the beach. When dusk falls, the fresh catch is put on the barbecue. The fishermen throw a little party with delicious garopa in Stefan's honor. Mm, that's good. The grilled fish is washed down with sugarcane liquor, the national drink. <laughs> That's a really nice photo. As you can see, they don't have many possessions. There are stones, there's sand. But what they do have in abundance are human riches. And they show this with their hospitality, or morabeza, as they call it. I find this very moving, because this has disappeared completely from our modern lifestyle, with just a few exceptions. And it's interesting to rediscover it here. And nobody is keeping count. They don't expect you to give anything in return. It's just how they approach life. And I think it's great. Vicente is a particularly windy island, but today, early in the morning, the two men risk a photographic fly around. Mindelo Bay. For half a century, this harbor town was an important stopping point for trading ships going to West Africa, India, and South America. Coal and water supplies were replenished here, and the sailors enjoyed the wine and music. The town became a cosmopolitan meeting place. However, during economic crises, there were famines that drove many people into exile. The wind picks up over the bay, and flying in the fib is increasingly shaky. Richard decides not to fly back to the airport, but to land here on the beach in front of the town. Muchas gracias. Yes, very good. On a l'impression d'être dans un checker. Yeah. 
You feel like you're sitting in a shaker, and the light over the town is not good. There's a lot of shadow and the conditions are not great. We were being shaken up the whole time. It wasn't stable at all. Sure, we were able to fly, but it wasn't so good for taking photos. It was super if you wanted to get thrown all over the place. But that's got more to do with Disneyland than aerial photography. Well, I don't know. Well, we've shown that you can fly the FIB in South Incendi, but um, it's uh, not very. Ple it wasn't very pleasant, really, because the, again, you still got this quite high wind at, uh, coming over the mountains, and, and over here, didn't dare go anywhere nearer to the town because it just starts getting really turbulent as the as the uh, as the wind comes over these hills. I think I'll take the bus back. <laughs> When does the bus go? I want to take the bus. Stefan uses the warm evenings to think about the motifs he still needs for his photo book. He's had one scene in mind for quite a while, and tomorrow he wants to make it happen. I'm trying to recreate a scene that I've seen many times, an evening mood, known in France as between the dog and the wolf, when the day is on the wane and the night is coming. It's when people often meet to drink a glass and play cards. In a small side street, Stéphane wants to set his photo up like a director. There's an oil lamp to light the scene, but it's on its last legs and finally gives up. Stéphane wonders where he's going to get a new one. Maybe the neighbors can help them. Hello, Babel. How's it going? Have you got a petroleum lamp for a scene we're shooting? No, I don't. You've got a lamp like that at home. In five minutes, I'm calling the whole thing off. <laughs> yes, just like that. You're not getting my lamp. Just for two minutes. No! No! Okay, I'm sorry, Babel. All right, fine, we can all go home. A Molotov cocktail Cape Verde style is brought out to save the scene. Okay, you play cards, but we need someone to lean against the door. Everything is ready now. Later we'll have to arrange a few small details. Children playing, for example. But now we have to wait for the light. The scene is not so visually interesting as yet. It needs the right light. Slowly, evening falls over the alleyways of Mindelo. Well, I'd like you to do it like this, you see? Play short passes to one another, nice and slow. The ball has to go up like this. No, no, small movements. Nice and gently. Les enfants. Le problème, c'est que c'est surtout de la. The problem is is that it's always frustrating when you have an image in your head that you're trying to create. You want reality to match your imagination, but to get it exactly right, you'd really have to paint pictures rather than take photos. In the town center of Mendelo, Richard has discovered a monument that he really wants to show Stefan. 
the stone eagle honors two Portuguese pioneers of flying, who were the first to travel to South America by plane. Stefan realizes that the fib has not been given a name yet. It would be nice to find a name for the fib, and I've got a good idea. In New Caledonia, there's a bird that can't fly. It's called the cagoo, and it's our emblem. We don't fly very often either, so we could name the fib cagoo. No. The fib flies very, very well. If we need a name, I suggest lilac breasted roller. That's an African bird. It's purple. And it flies like this. <laughs> well, I prefer fib to that. It's much shorter. I think we could write your name on one side and mine on the other. And each flies with his own side. No problem. You fly and I'll stay on the ground with my side. The ferry to the neighboring island of Santo Antão takes people, bananas and sugar cane across the strait. Today there's a flying dinghy on the loading list. This attracts the interest of the Cape Verde Customs. Where is the permit from the Port Authority? The captain confirms that he sees no problem with taking the fib, but there is no official permit on paper. Luckily, in Cape Verde, many problems can be solved with a friendly word. Customs official allows the fib aboard. Why are you not flying? Well, the wind is very strong as, as usual for Cape Verde Islands, perfect for windsurfing, kite surfing, flying kites, keeping cool, but no good for microlighting. But sometimes we just get enough that we can just about fly, but it will be right on the limit to fly to fly there. Crossing from Mindelo to the Isle of Santo Antão only takes about an hour. Santo Antão is the most westerly of the Cape Verde Islands. It has an airport, but it hasn't been used for years. Richard and Stefan hope they might be able to use it for the fib. Santo Antão is also known as the Island of Mount. Over the centuries, it has been the refuge of castaways, fugitives, and exiles. The northeast trade wind regularly blows clouds and fog against the rocks, making the island look like something from a pirate film. The closed Santo Antão airport is still being watched over by its faithful security man, Francisco. Richard politely asks for special permission to take off, and Francisco gets in touch with the head office. Yes, some gentlemen have arrived. Have they got permission to use this airport? Yes, from Mr. Mundo Santos, the director. Uh, they've got a small plane and they're making an expedition. Yes, French and German. Or Japanese. He's English. And a Frenchman. So they have permission. They can take off. Excellent. <laughs> Motor of the 
With its strong crosswind, the Santo Antão Airport has always presented a challenge to pilots. 20 years ago, rain and poor visibility caused a terrible accident. A plane from Sao Vicente was shattered against a rock face. The airport was closed down. Francisco misses the airport's golden age and is happy that something's finally happening again. He suggests using the former fire brigade garage as a hangar for the FIB. Great, we've got our own personal airport. And the airport superintendent, uh, Francisco, is one of those people who, uh, you know, it, I don't know whether he's ever been in an aeroplane or whether he's been around airports for years and years. And it would be, be great to take him for a ride. I'd love to take, take him for a ride around to, to see his airport from the air. In the green valleys of Santo Antao, the principal crop is sugarcane. Small distilleries produce the national drink of Cape Verde, grok, a strong sugarcane spirit. Richard, who runs a farm at home and is a passionate hobbyist, would like to know how grok is made. I can show you how it's made. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. The okay. juice comes out over there. Careful of this. We make the liquor with this. See, 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 see. Okay. C'est là donc tu mets le. And water runs along here for cooling. Mm. And there? That's the finished grog. The electric sugarcane press is a Brazilian model from the 60s. However, using it requires a lot of care and skill. It's a bit too strong, but not bad. Want to try it? No, that's mine. Come on, give it a proper tasting. Down the hatch. How strong is it? 40? 20? 22. 22? That's not so strong at all. After visiting the fermentation plant and further rounds of tasting, the grok begins to take effect. Stefan and Richard decide they ought to head home. The men have finally decided to give the fib a name. They stick to the plan. On one side, it's the cagou, after a new Caledonian bird that can hardly fly. On the other side, lilac-breasted roller, an African bird with an unusual flying style. Yeah, that one. Yeah, it's good. Okay. At least this side's good. No, I prefer the other side. Thank you. Good job. Francisco has worked at the Santo Antao airport since 1984. His old boss always told him one day something big will happen here again, you'll see. And that day has come. Francisco will see his world from above for the first time ever. Oh, yeah, the fuck? 
Viola Casta de amigues E fetes cavaque Na casa marimlin E vintaces Viola Casta de amigues E fetes cavaque Ai, é me fete E fetes cavaque Você só um jeva do cinto Sou da rei da rei de pá Ai, é me fete E fetes cavaque Você só um jeva do cinto Sou da rei da rei de pá Long live Francisco! Thank you, everybody. That was a lovely trip. I really enjoyed it. Ponte do Sol is a beautiful place. It is. Sadly, there was no time to buy presents for the children. Before the trip is over, Stefan wants to visit the Paul Valley once more. He really likes the raw beauty of the hilly landscape. <laughs> Two women are preparing the national dish of Cape Verde, cachupa. First, corn has to be mashed. This job requires a drummer's feel for rhythm. That looks difficult. Can I try it? Yes. Beginners have a hard time with the pilau, the traditional wooden mortar. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. For cachupa, you take garlic, manioc, onions, olive oil, water, beans, white beans, fava beans, pea beans, and green beans. The secret of good cachupa is breaking the corn kernels out of their shells. This can take hours. The national dish is eaten in the morning, at midday, and in the evening. The Cape Verdeans never tire of the tasty stew. It's actually the food of the poor, but everyone here loves it. Cachupa rica, the rich cachupa, also contains meat or rice along with all the beans. Preparing good cachupa can easily take four hours, but for Stefan, the wait is worth it. Thank you. Welcome. Mm, very good. Put the lid on, then add a little wine, a little of this water, and then it'll be good. It'll be a really smooth cachupa. It's a simple taste, but I was expecting it to be tougher. When you see the corn, the kernels, you expect something much harder, but it's very tender and well cooked. And the fact that it's cooked with charcoal gives the cachupa a great taste. And when you're walking a lot, cachupa gives you a lot of energy. When you see the mountains here on Cape Verde, especially on Santo Antao, you wonder how the people can walk for kilometers with all the steep hills. And I think one of the secrets is cachupa. It contains a lot of energy. And it's really delicious.
Stefan and Richard say goodbye to the Cape Verde Islands and their inhabitants. Their assignment on the windy archipelago wasn't always an easy one, but on this they do agree, it was worth it.